Hello my little beauties, it's David Connolly here, the web developer extraordinaire. Today I'm going to tell you about something that I think is coming up. I think that there is a web development revolution that is coming your way. That's right, a web development revolution. Forget about the renaissance, you know, that's all in the past. And I want to talk about what this revolution means and you can see pretty much <laughs> with this incredible diagram, with the squint bits and pieces about where we are and what I think is coming up. And I thought I would outline that and I'm also going to tell you about who some of the winners and losers are going to be when this revolution kicks off. And finally, I'm going to be offering some advice on how you should be preparing for this web development revolution. So. Over on the left here, we can see a typical app structure, right? So each of these little blobs represents a directory. It may have things like CSS, images, um, you know, code, JavaScript, PHP, whatever. And typically, when we build apps, we make these directories that contain stuff that handles all of that. And maybe you'll have a few folders if it's MVC or something. But the general idea is that you've got these small directories that, you know, handle certain tasks. They are assigned to certain things, such as items crud, for example. And then, what we do, do we not? We typically have this big, giant, stupid, ridiculous folder that's usually out of sight and out of mind. In the case of PHP, it's called Vendor. In the case of Node.js, it's called Node Modules. And that's the folder that will contain all of our third-party libraries. Often, this folder is oversized. Often, this folder contains stuff that you'll never even use anyway, but it's just there. Actually, time out. Let's have a concrete example of this. So here's a video from Code Course on YouTube, where he's talking about how to set up Amazon S3 with PHP. And he's saying in this tutorial that we should use the AWS SDK and he goes through instructions on how to get that on Packagist. Now I'm not saying he's a bad developer or anything. He's actually probably covered this more in depth than anyone I can find on YouTube. But if you have a look at what you're actually getting here, I mean here is the thing that he talks about getting, the Amazon SDK. And do you know that if you download this, and it's a series on how to get CloudFront working, but here's what you end up with. You end up with a vendor folder with AWS, and look at all of the source folders. Look at all of this stuff. And I opened up some of them. They've all got their own folders and everything. Look at it. It goes on and on and on and on and on. And in fact, the CloudFront thing is just a tiny part of this. But look at all of the, well, dare I say, all of the bullshit that you get that you just don't need. And whenever I look in a vendor folder, I see things like that all the time. I mean, I'm looking at my own stuff and I'm like, Mikey179? Who the hell is Mikey179? Now, the point is, this is typical. This is what happens when you use things like packages and NPM. You end up with tons and tons and tons of stuff a lot of which you don't need. And I think it's safe to say that if aliens landed from another planet, some advanced civilization, this is not how they would structure an app. At least, pr probably not, right? <laughs> so, that's where we are. Now, the question is, well, what's coming up? And I can tell you that the answer is this. So basically, we're going to get rid of that big daft folder. And some of you are thinking, well, hang on a minute. I like my PDF generator that I download, or I like uh, some email thing, perhaps a third-party email provider or something, uh, a class or whatever. Maybe you like that stuff and you'd like to keep using that. So how's that going to fit into the picture? Well, the answer is you're still going to be able to use all of that stuff. However, instead of having it in a big daft folder, you're going to add those things directly into your own folders, which I'm now going to call modules. That's what's coming up, in my opinion. Now, 
Just to be clear, the current situation whereby people get libraries from packages and NPM is fine, it works, it's technically a, an impressive thing, actually. But there are some inherent flaws with this system, and here they are. So, the whole thing, and it's really not an opinion, it's over-engineered, rubbish benchmarks, not efficient. I think that the uh, whole packagist NPM setup is a security risk. I think that there's a lack of accountability, especially when you download a library and it says, well, this needs three or four other libraries. Well, that means you're potentially bringing in all sorts of teams of developers and their code is going on to your app. As the crypto market surely goes and continues 10 years into the future or whatever, I think it's inevitable that you're going to see a massive effort among professional hackers and all sorts of fraudsters to go after sites with centralized libraries. It's a perfect place for somebody like that. And they're going to be wanting your crypto wallet addresses and stuff. I think it's going to get, I think it's going to go crazy actually. And I believe that those sites represent a security risk. Now, I also think that they stifle innovation because the current recommendation, I watched Adam Culp do a a, a thing where he was teaching this packagist and he says, well, don't download it unless it's really popular and it has tens of thousands of downloads. Well, that is stifling innovation. If you're not going to be motivated to try something new and something as yet unpopular, then that's kind of duff. And of course, it's going to de-incentivize people to build really cool stuff and put them onto those places. Uh, finally, well, two more. I think there's an increased chance of faults. That's because with each third-party library, library that you download, you're also inheriting their own release schedules, their own coding quirks, their own security risks, their own politics. I mean, all sorts of potential hassles there. It's just not good. And no quality control. Originally, that said poor quality control. But I don't think there's any quality control and most of the libraries appear to be kind of duff, you know? So, what else can we expect with this revolution? Well, I think you're going to see MVC out and modular web development in. Don't be scared of this phrase. All it means is your apps are going to be broken up into little folders that will be easily interchangeable. That's all you need to know. And by the way, people may not use this phrase. That's just the phrase I'm using. I think that self-appointed governing bodies are going to become irrelevant and traditional education will be considered obsolete. Isn't it already, actually? Now, here's your winners and losers. I think that self-employed developers are going to do really well out of this, especially if you are a lone ranger developer who is willing to learn and adapt quite quickly. I think you're going to do really, really well over these next few years. Also, I think video learning providers will do well, so sites like Udemy, for example, are going to do pretty well. I think that the big tech hosting providers, especially these three, are going to do well. And the reason for that is because when you start breaking things up into little folders, this, as I'm calling it modular web development, it lends itself to services like AWS, where you can upload a certain thing, such as in the case of Speed Coding Academy, I've got the videos on Amazon, let's say. And it it seems like a natural progression, I think. So for better or for worse, I think that the wind is blowing in the favour of the big tech companies, especially these three. Also, I have to say that some of the countries where Eng English... I'm trying to slow down. Some of the countries where English is maybe not the first language are going to do very well out of this. And I have identified these three places in particular. If you happen to be from one of these three places, then I, I have to tell you, I'm a real optimist because I think that there's some good stuff coming up for developers from these places. I won't go into it all just now, though. Just trust me, there's a lot of thought going into this, okay, and research behind this. Now, the losers are going to be the traditional educational establishments. The unis, they're done. Forget about it. They cannot keep up. Self-appointed governing bodies, such as PHP Fig, they will become irrelevant. 
And in fact, they're not the only ones. If you take, for example, this group here, Zend, who charge for Zend Framework certification, they're done as well. Um, also, MVC Frameworks, I'm not going to name any in particular, but there are a few that probably won't be around for too much longer. And finally, NPM and Packagist. I'm not predicting the death of them. I'm just talking about a trend, okay? So don't panic. So, how should you prepare? Well, it's the classic Steph Mischuk advice. Focus on core technologies. This is a time, especially over the next six months, where you should be focusing on learning pure PHP or pure JavaScript or pure whatever you're into. Python, I don't know. But focus on the, the core technology. Do not tether yourself to a particular framework. Unless, of course, it's the Trongate framework. <laughs> well, I've, I haven't released it into the world yet, so I won't mention that. But in all seriousness, I don't think it's a good time to do that. And if you can, I would avoid starting big projects in 2020. You know, we're coming up to July now, and you're better off just doing smaller projects. If you, mark my words, if you start a big project now, I'm talking about something that might take a year, I can virtually guarantee that you'll be starting again as soon as you see what's coming up. The exception to that is members of Speed Coding Academy because they all know what's coming up. But this is not about me. This is a trend that is actually bigger than me in all of my own stuff. I think that this is going to be happening across the wider web development community and I think that you're going to see that soon. Dino has sort of lean this direction but I don't think that it has really how can I put this I don't think it has been positioned with enough clarity to really really make a dent but I may be wrong about that nevertheless I am predicting that we're going to see a move away from that type of thing and if you want to know how we're going to build apps there you go catch you later